Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about whether or not moving to Mexico is going to be the right decision for you. Now, there's a lot of people that are looking into videos like this and other videos out there um, talking about moving to Mexico. And uh, moving to Mexico seems like the new hip and awesome thing. And look, I love it out here. I, I moved out here several years ago, five years ago to be exact, and I love it. In fact, I make tons of videos talking about that topic as to how much it's awesome out here and how, how much I love it and how much other people love living out here. Um, but the reality is, is that not everybody loves it. There's a lot of people that end up coming out to Mexico and once they get out here and they make that whole move is when they quickly realize that they made the wrong decision and they want to just go home. They just want to go back. And so that's why I'm making videos like this. It's not to discourage you or anyone out there. It's just to inform you so that you make the right decision. So the one of the main reasons, in fact, the majority of the people that are moving to Mexico, all right, is literally because of a financial reason. So there's a lot of people out there that just cannot make ends meet anymore and Again, the dollar, your currency is not going as far as it used to go anymore. So you look at videos of people like me and others living in Mexico for, you know, a thousand dollars a month or whatever it is we say. And you think to yourself, oh, great, I can go out there and make my currency, my dollar, my whatever go further than it has ever gone before. And I can live out there like a king. At the very least, I can live out there like a regular person as opposed to the way I'm living right now. <clears throat> So for a lot of people, that's why you choose to move to Mexico. But you guys quickly, you know, just forget for whatever reason that it's going to be very difficult moving to Mexico. So number one, if you don't know Spanish, that is a major hurdle that you're going to have to figure out. If you are not Latino, Hispanic like me, you're probably, again, it's not going to be easy for you. Um, I can go on and on. There's a lot of reasons. And again, we're going to be talking about them today. I wrote them all down. That's what we know. I did. I'm doing a whole episode on this topic. But the reality is, is that, again, you're moving to Mexico and your whole idea, your whole intention is to start over and to re begin a new, like literally a reset, a giant reset. Um, well, guess what? That goes with a lot of work. You know, you got to get all your Mexican paperwork. You got to go through the government to, to do that, which, again, is not easy. You, know, you might not be able to qualify for your immigration paperwork right away. So you might have to figure out how you're going to you know, do visa runs on a regular basis. Um, you're going to have to figure out income in case you haven't figured that out already. You're going to have to get used to the cultural changes. You're going to start getting homesick in some cases. You know, hey, there's only so many tacos you're going to want to eat every single day of the week. Um, and I can go on and on. There's just so many things out there that once you're here and once the whole vacation mode is over, you know, once that whole, uh, you know, the fantasy is over, hey, I'm in a different country. This is going to be a new adventure. Once that's over and everything settles down and you realize, OK, this is my new life now, you're going to start getting used to all of these things that you might not be ready for. Some people are, you know, there's a lot of people, again, me included, um, where I just embraced everything and I love it now you know there was a lot of things and uh, that i didn't like at the beginning and uh, there's a lot of hardships that come with a, a move like this um not just culturally but you know i could go on as, as to you know again we're in a different country even though we're neighbors it's there's so many things that are just i've never done before and i've never even heard of and it's just like a complete you know 360 or 180 to what i'm used to from back home and uh again some people embrace these changes and some people can't some people just cannot handle it. It's just way too much for them. So if your only intention for coming to Mexico is a financial one, a financial reason, hey, I'm moving to Mexico because I'm retired and I just want to live, you know, the last days of my, my life, my retirement out in a place where I can have my dollar be stretched as far as possible. Well, again, if you're in that situation or even in a situation like me, you know, you're 30, 40, 50 year old and you still got to work. You still got to figure out income. You still got a lot of life to live again. You know, coming to Mexico might seem like a good idea at first because, again, it's a better financial situation. But then when you start adding up all these other hurdles and all these other things that you're going to have to now deal with by moving to this country or any other country, it might not be worth it. Because at the end of the day, if all you're looking for is some, you know, uh, 
financial help in a sense of like, hey, I just want to live in a place where my money is going to go further, where I don't have to work as hard to get a roof over my head and get some food on my plate. Um, you might just you know, find that in a rural area in your own country. You might just have to get out of the area you're living in, maybe move to another state or another part of the country. Again, whether you're in Europe, all right, whether you're in the USA, it doesn't matter. You know, if you're living in New York City, in LA, in Miami, in Chicago, and you know, for all the obvious reasons, you don't want to live there anymore, but the majority of the reason is just financial more than anything else. Of course, you know, we got safety, we got so many other things that we can talk about, but we're just talking about the financials for right now. Um, Maybe it might not be a bad idea to move, I don't know, to Mississippi, to Alabama, to some of these very rural areas, some of these places that you might not have ever thought of in a million years to move to, but you quickly realize, hey, wait a minute, you know, if I move to Mexico, I got to learn another language. I got to, I am I don't know if I'm going to be able to get Amazon on demand like the way I want to. I'm not going to be able to get a lot of these comforts that I want. I'm going to get homesick. I could go on and on. There's just so many things involved because again, look, I live in Merida. There's a lot of other cities in Mexico in which, you know, I got Amazon, I got Costco, I got Walmart, I got all that, but there's other places where you're not going to get any of that. And for some people, that's just a big make or break deal. I mean, look, I didn't even know we had Amazon or Walmart. I didn't know we had any of these American things out here when I moved out here. I just figured, hey, I'm just moving to the middle of nowhere. It was a pleasant surprise that I saw that we had all those things. But long story short, you know, for some people out there, then you might, you know, you might have some sort of business that relies on U.S. shipping. And all of a sudden you thinking, hey, I'm going to move to another country. And you're thinking, hey, I can't do my business out there anymore. It might not be a bad idea to just move to an area in the USA where you can get a home for like $150,000, $200,000, $250,000 and get an amazing home in an amazing area or just pay rent that's going to be definitely under $1,000 a month, you know? And again, you know, basically in line with what you're going to be paying here for a high-end home, which is like around $800. So why not just move to one of these rural areas if they're safe? If all you're looking for is, again, a home, some food, you know, internet, the light, you know, all of these things that we all have. And a lot of people are just thinking, oh, I'm going to move to Mexico so that I can afford all those things. Well, you can probably afford those in your home country. It's just you're probably not looking in the right spot. You probably don't want to. You probably had it enough. And if that's the case, if all of a sudden, you know, it's not just a financial reason why you're looking to move out of Mexico, but reality is is that you're looking to move out of mexico like we said i mean you're looking to move out of the usa and looking to move into mexico basically because you feel like your country is falling apart you you cannot you know um recognize your own country um you know the things that you know are going on right now you cannot sympathize with the way things are going i could go on and on there's a lot of issues, you know, um, depends on who you are. If you got family with kids, you might be worried about the education system. If, you know, you're single um, male, you might be wondering, am I ever going to find a mate? Same with a female. And, you know, I can go on and on. There's a million reasons. In, in fact, I was listening earlier to some other podcasts and they were talking about how there's these things called passport bros. I didn't even know about this. But, you know, again, just males out there, you know, individuals that are looking and again i know that there's women that do this trust me I, I deal with this on a regular basis um which by the way let me just interject here if anyone out there you know wants a one-on-one -on -one zoom consultation with me or wants to again speak to me personally and privately um please go to my website and you can find more information there but like i was saying um you know it doesn't matter who you are some people are just looking to move to mexico or to another country looking for love looking for stability when it comes to all of their surroundings. You know, maybe they just are tired of all the violence where they come from. Maybe they're tired of the fact that they can't afford, you know, to live a normal life where they come from. They can't find a good job. You know, I, I could go on and on. So, you know, there's a lot of reasons why there's a lot of people that are moving to Mexico. But if you are looking for, you know, solutions to your problems and some of these solutions can be found maybe in your backyard. It might not be a bad idea to look and explore that first. Because again, if you're moving from one state in the USA, let's say you're going from New York to Georgia or Alabama, whatever country you're going, I mean, whatever state you're going to, the change is not going to be as drastic or as difficult as if you're going to move to Mexico. 
another country altogether, okay? You can remember that, okay? So again, if you're moving in the same country, it's the same language. You know, you gotta get your paperwork done, like, I don't know, a new license. You know, you got to register your whatever in the new place that you're moving to. It's, it's going to be very quick as opposed to coming to another country where you don't even understand the language. You know, not just not understand the language, but all the difficulties of the bureaucracy in another country. And I can go on and on. But again, if you're moving to Mexico, all right, because you're looking for something as simple as freedom, like I was. Because that's the real main reason I moved to Mexico was for freedom. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter what the hurdles are. You're going to figure it out. In fact, I was thinking about this today, which is, you know, one of the reasons I'm making this video is simply the fact that I remember when I first came to Mexico, I was escaping, you know, a living hell that was in that I was living in the U.S. at the moment, which a lot of people are at the moment, you know, in one shape, form or another. And I was just escaping that and trying to. And, and then once I escaped that, I would figure out whatever it was out here, because I knew that moving out here was going to bring me a whole set of problems. I was going to leave one set of problems behind, but I was going to embark on a, a brand new set of problems, a brand new adventure, a brand new everything. But for me in my situation, like again, there's a lot of people out there in, in a similar situation, a great reset, okay? Some sort of reset to your life is what you're looking for. So you come out here and you're thinking to yourself, okay, I'll come to this country. I'll figure out my visa situation later. You know, I'll just be a perpetual tourist like a lot of people do where i just keep doing visa runs you know i'll just play it by ear i'll see what happens yada 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 i'm looking for freedom i'm looking for this knowing that you have a mountain of things that you're gonna have to take care of at some point well you'll be fine because again you're coming out here and you're realizing simply that again i'm coming out here i gotta get my immigration situation at some point i'm gonna have to get you know my paperwork done at some point at some point you know what i mean I, you know I, I could go on and on you know all these things that just take time and again if you're really thinking about moving to mexico or, or any country it's things that you're gonna have to take care of okay and um you know one shape form or another at one point and um the thing is, it's like as you're getting, you know, again, if you're if you're coming out here and as you're moving in through through all of that process of, of all these things that you have to do, you know, get a bank account, um, you know, again, renting a home, I could go on and on, you know, all these things that are gradually just start appearing and you're going to have to deal with as time goes on. Well, again, if you are here for the right reasons, it's not a problem. It really is not a problem. You know, what are the right reasons? Again, every other reason except for only financial. And again, for some of you guys that are only looking for a financial, you know, um, help, you know, in the sense, again, I, I can't, I don't know why I can't think of the word at the moment, you know. Um, but if you, all you're looking for some relief, you know, some sort of financial relief, you know, it still might be a good de decision for you and to come out here. Because, you know, and just, it's not just a financial relief moving to Mexico, but hey, you're down to, you know, you, you like tacos, you like Mexican food, you like the culture, you know, all these things. There's so many other things that once you add them up, it's, it's totally worth it. But again, you know, there's so many people out there that are just coming for financial relief, you know, some sort of financial help in that sense. You know what I mean? Meaning, hey, my, my money's going to go further here. It might not be the right decision. But for anyone else, you know, that's, you know, looking into starting a new adventure, you know, wants to embrace a culture, you know, might look for, you know, a partner that is, you know, of a different, you know, ethnicity or what have you. And I can go on and on. There's so many things. Um, you're going to love it. So like I said, when I first came out here, I knew that I had to do all of these things and then some. And I was just going to figure it out, figure it out along the way. But because I was in a very unique position, meaning I, I didn't plan on ever going back home. I don't want to go back home. You know, that was my mindset. Um, and uh, again, I was running away from all the horribleness that was back home. I said, all right, you know, I'm going to have to deal with all this. So let me just deal with it as it comes. So as the, you know, again, as I was living here, I had to figure out how to you know, again, prove the things that I had to prove in order to rent a home. Now, again, thank God in Mexico, I didn't have to do much. You know, I just had to have a valid passport, some cash. That's it. Sign here. We're good to go. I found a place. All right. As later on, I was trying to get a bank account. I realized, oh, I can't get a bank account yet. I got to get some sort of residency. Okay, whatever. I'll figure it out. You know what I mean? There's other ways I can get my money here. I talk about all these things in my other videos, all right? But I just dealt with it. Um, eventually, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I was dating. You know, I came out here. I wasn't expecting anything. I'm just a single guy living my life. But, you know, I was dating. And as I was dating, eventually I, you know, met Christian. As I met Christian, you know, 
everything, you know, again, one thing led to the other. Before you know it, we're getting married. As soon as we're getting married, well, guess what? You know, not only was it something very unexpected for me, it's like, hey, I found love. I found somebody that, you know, I never thought I was ever going to find ever in my life, ever. And all of a sudden, again, we're, we've been together, married and together almost four years now, but, you know, three years married and then some. And again, I never thought in a million years I would be married, let alone happily married, let alone married for years. And I could go on and on. And it all just happened. When, because, again, I, I came out here looking for freedom, looking for a better life, better quality of life, just better life. That's it. I mean, not even any of these fancy words, okay? Just freedom and a better life. That's it. And there was things in my mind that I've always wanted to do and I've always kind of, you know, dreamed of having and I never really could have just because of life. You know, things happen. One of those things was, again finding a wife and being happily married. Now, I was never going to force that because again, I have, you know, when I got married, I was almost 40 years old. So I never forced that, you know? Uh, so uh, by the time I did get married to her, it, it was, you know, something that I wanted to do, something that we both wanted to do. Now, by getting married, it also helped me with my immigration situation. You know, I was able to fix that like that. No problem. Again, this is way before all those immigration programs that allow you to get immigration very easily and quickly out here in Mexico. But I, I digress. At the end of the day, it all just fell into place. And why? Well, because I came out here again. Again, I got to reemphasize looking for freedom. And once I got out here, I quickly realized, oh, wait a minute. There's all the freedom I want is here. That's it. I just got to play the game, you know, meaning I got, I'm in Mexico, so I got to be Mexican, do things like the Mexicans do. And um, for me, it was an easy transition because again, being Cuban background, born in the USA, but you know, born and raised in Miami in a very Latino culture. It's just, I, I was basically born in the Latino Cuban hood, born and raised. And, you know, it's just a different, you know, life. You know what I mean? I, I the, the way you know, like I've made other videos talking about this before, um, meaning, again, if you're Latino, if you're Mexican, especially, um, what are you waiting for? Come to Mexico. You already have, you know, all these advantages. So to me, it was a similar situation. I mean, meaning that it was a very easy assimilation. In fact, it was easier to assimilate moving to Merida, moving here to Mexico than it was to, I don't know, move to Seattle or uh, you know, LA or wherever else I was in the U S all right. It was just easier out here. It was an easier transition because it was to me, it was just like, you know, what I already knew my whole life. So, you know, with that being said, you know, I had a huge advantage that, you know, not everybody has out there, but it didn't matter. You know, I came out here again, going back to, you know, square one, freedom, freedom, freedom. That's all I was really looking for. And I, found out very quickly out here that if I really wanted to, I could live out here a decade without ever getting any kind of legal paperwork and nobody would be the wiser and it would be totally fine. But of course, you know, the longer I was here, the more I realized, hey, I really want to be here and I'm still young and I got a lot of things I got to take care of, you know, I, mean, I got to do in my life. So I want to be here legal. So again, I took care of my paperwork. I did everything so that I can be here legally. Why? Because I wanted to start a business. I wanted to, you know, literally set up roots here. I wanted to do all these things. Now, again, I kind of wanted to do it, but I, I didn't really know that I wanted to do it until, again, as I, the years kept passing and I just stayed here, started a family, you know, all of these things that just kind of just fell into place. I quickly realized, oh my God, I'm never leaving. This is home now. You know, that's it. I've set up roots here. Where am I going? You know what I mean? Like, you understand? It was just like a, a completely different thing. But again, all I was looking for was freedom. And I found it here. In fact, I found such an abundance of freedom. Okay. Again, in my eyes, you know, what I consider freedom, um, that it was just like, I, I never wanted to leave. You know what I mean? It was just like, the longer I was here, the more I experienced what Mexico truly is, the, you know, the more I wanted to stay. And uh, that was my case. And that happens to a lot of you guys. That's why I'm bringing this up. So a lot of you guys, you know, you come to, you know, you have an idea of Mexico. And then once you get here, you're, you know, surprised beyond your wildest dreams as to how amazing and how awesome, you know, Mexico really is and how much it really is free. And I could go on, you know, and on, you know, when it comes to like the freedom and the liberty and all these other things. But 
you know, for some of you guys, you know, again, you come out here and uh, unfortunately, you know, again, you're just coming out here to get some sort of financial relief. And then once you get here, you realize, hey, wait a minute, this is a lot of freedom, meaning these people are living in anarchy in a sense. Oh my God, there's no like law and order. Oh my God, you know, the cop is really more interested in, you know, taking 500 pesos from me or, you know, they're, they're actually, you know, helping individuals out by being public servants instead of being my lapdog, you know, meaning, hey, I'm at home and my neighbor, I don't like him because he's just ugly and he's loud. And, you know, back in the U.S., I could call the cops on him and have him arrested and have him get in trouble and, and have the, the police to be my lapdogs, you know, um, and then in Mexico is not like that at all. And I could go on like and on, you know, what I mean, there's just so many things like that. Um, that a lot of people, once they come out here, they just don't like, you know, they don't like, you know, how the, how everyone in Mexico minds their business. You know, there aren't Karens just walking around all over the place, you know, uh, telling you what to do, how to do it, when to do it. I mean, again, a, a, a lot of people are just used to that and want that and need that. <clears throat> and when they come to Mexico and they see that not only is that not available here, but you know, when they do it, it's not you know, handled well, you know what I mean? The people, the population does not like that kind of uh, attitude or th that kind of, you know, how people are. Um, so again, that's one of the deterrents, you know, where a lot of people eventually just say, hey, I'm going back home. I'm going back to the US. I'm going back to wherever I'm coming from, you know, simply because, you know, I, I can't be a Karen, you know, I, I can't have, you know, the police, you know, uh, be my lapdog, you know, um, things are too slow in Mexico. I don't like the way that things are in Mexico. They're just way too slow. You know, it's just so many things. Look, when I got to Mexico, I hated the fact that things were so slow. But why was that? Well, because I come from a very, very, very fast culture, you know, a go, 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 you know, mentality. Again, America, USA. On top of that, I'm Cuban, you know, we're just always you know revving the motor at you know and, and fifth gear we just never stop so i came to mexico and all of a sudden things are slow even in places like mexico city and other places that i've visited that are go 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 they're not compared to what i'm used to they're just not things are just slower here it's a completely different mentality when it comes to you know again how we're going to do things when we're going to do things what's important what's not important and for me at first i couldn't get used to it it was a, it was a transition you know it was just why is everything so slow why does everything takes forever why it, does do people not you know um when they say they're going to be here at 10 why do they never show up or why do they don't even call or you know why do people just you know are flaky or wh why are these things but then the longer i've been here the more i realize oh it's just a way of life and it's not for everybody. For me, I got used to it because it's like, yeah, that's fine. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, we're all just on whatever time. And yes, sometimes it can get annoying. But it, when in the totality of things, you know, in the totality of everything, it's it's nothing compared to, you know, the problems that you're dealing with and the stress that you're dealing with, you know, back home. Again, some people, that's, you know, the, the fact that things are so slow out here and people care more about their family than they do making a few bucks. Yeah, that to them drives them crazy. For me, I enjoy that. I love the fact that a lot of times, you know, you'll see in the footage in the videos, you know, where you look, for example, at the beginning of this video, most of the footage was shot on a Sunday. You see, most of the streets are empty. Everybody's just home with the family, doing family things, whatever that is. And later on, probably where you're watching now, you're going to see a lot more people on the street. It's just a regular day in the neighborhood, you know, and people are just out and about no matter what the weather, no matter what the situation. So, you know, the Mexican people are some of the hardest working on the planet, but yet they are some of the most, you know, family oriented as well. And so how can they be so hard working and yet everything is so slow? You know, people make their own schedule, their own time. Most of, most of the country is closed on a Sunday and that can go on and on. Well, again, it's because they emphasize, you know, different things than they do where you're from. So out here, yeah, they might do 12-hour shifts on a Monday through Friday. But once it comes to Sunday or even Saturday, Saturdays are half days and then Sunday are family days. And you're going to have to get used to that, like it or not. And, and it's just, I can go on and on. Now, you know, I'll still get my Amazon delivery on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> But that's an American company that does a different thing. And, you know, I can still go to a restaurant. I can do, you know, still certain places, you know, grocery stores, plenty of places that are open and things are still functioning on a Sunday. But you're not going to see like the whole family doing groceries on a Sunday. You're not. 
You're just not. You know what I mean? Like, because people are, that's quality time with the family. That's lazy Sunday. That's, you know, let's rest and relax. You know, not go shopping, not go, you know, um, try to get all my errands done in time so that I can get back to work and none of that stuff. Because again, out here, there's still like a family structure. In fact, you might be a middle class family, just a regular, normal middle class family, and you probably have a live in maid to help you take care of all that stuff. So you don't have to worry about it. And it's inexpensive if you're a typical Mexican. It's part of the culture if you're a typical Mexican, you know, kind of like a nanny type of thing. All right. And so there's just so many things like that. This is like a gazillion things like that that are just very different that it might not be for you. It might not be your cup of tea. So again, you're just coming out here for some financial relief or what have you, you know what I mean? And, or, you know, just, I'm tired, I'm bored. You know, I don't like my president. I don't like this. I don't like, you know, again, very, I don't know, unimportant problems, you know, like a lot of people have. You know, we have, you know, a lot of these things that we think are, you know, horrible problems until we realize what a real problem is. And so, you know, again, a lot of people are moving out to Mexico or moving out of the country for the wrong reasons. But there's a gazillion still right reasons as to why you might want to move out here and live out here and have, again, a better quality of life. You've heard me talk about this multiple times in multiple videos, talking about, again, you know, all of the awesomeness that is living out here, how it, it, it just the quality of life is better, the food is better, you know, the, the environment is better in many cases, you know, so many things are just better, okay? But it's not for everybody. Like, for example, again, I have a sister, love her, shout out to you, and I got plenty of family members, cousins, the whole nine, and they will never be caught dead living in Mexico. It's as simple as that, no matter what, you know what I mean? And uh, it, it's just, again, some people love the American lifestyle. Some people just love, you know, how things are in the USA. Yeah. And not just the USA, Europe or wherever you're from. So, you know, again, you know, these people, they, they, in their minds, they're free. You know, in their minds, they're doing great. In their minds, you know, the country, yeah, is going through its problems and its troubles, but it's not the end of the world. You know, it's something that, again, they can fix, they can take care of, they can, you know, the country will recover from and so on and so forth. Yeah, sorry, I apologize. I'm waiting on a, on a phone call here and we're back. Yeah, so sorry about that. I had to think that phone call, it was actually the power company that was outside and uh, I had to deal with that because I've been having some issues with the house for some of you guys that know already. Um, and I've been trying to deal with this for the last like few weeks, few months. And, uh, you know, now I've been dealing with the power company and it's a lot of bureaucracy because it's not a private company per se, but it's uh, kind of run by the government. So there's a lot of, uh, uh, again, some people are okay with it. Some people are not. So, you know, there's one of those kind of negative things a little bit about the power company out here, um, meaning that, you know, they've already sent like four or five different crews out here just to fix that problem. And, uh, you know, now this last crew just left and they determined there was something to do with their end with the power company. So now they got to send another crew out here, you know, to work on the power lines and that can go on and on. So again, you know, with a private entity, you know, like we're used to um, in the USA, for example, this was a pro this is a problem that would have already been fixed. But since we're dealing with a completely different animal out here, it's taken a long time to fix. But long story short, I think we're getting close to getting that fixed. And again, just going back to all that that we were talking about earlier, where again, and not just the cultural changes, but the fact that, you know, people take their time out here and things are just very different. It's just a completely different animal where some people can get used to it with time and eventually, you know, enjoy it or you know they just it is what it is or some people it's just too much to handle and they just need to go back home and you know just deal with the things that are back home you know what i mean like some people just prefer that one shape form or another but again it's not easy living in mexico just like it's not easy living in the usa or living anywhere you know sure some things are easier and some things are more difficult but again it all depends on the individual and this is again why we're making this video talking about these subjects because again it all really comes down to you and how you deal with life on a regular basis. And that's why a lot of people eventually, they can never make that change, uh, not just moving to Mexico, but any other country, just because the individual themselves cannot change or doesn't want to change. And there's nothing wrong with that. But again, it just comes with the territory. Obviously, if you're moving to a completely different you know, country or different area or different anything, there's gonna be changes no matter what. Even if you're just moving to a different neighborhood, 
things are just not the same as to where your old neighborhood and so on and so forth. So with all that being said, there was just one last thing I did want to mention and talk about when it comes to, you know, a lot of the changes that come, you know, with moving to a different country like Mexico. There's a lot of people out there that eventually, you know, when they finally bite the bullet, move to Mexico, um, just because of many situations, you know, a lot of it has to do maybe they don't speak the language. Um, but regardless, you know, they're people out there that find themselves in a situation where they're forced to make friends with other expats, other foreigners, other people from their own country. You know, whether they are going to, you know, expat enclaves, you know, uh, basically, you know, going to places where, you know, other people from their country or other foreigners gather on a regular basis, you know, once you start interacting in those groups and only in those groups, you quickly start to realize that you're back in high school all over again. And so for some people, it's, you know, it's great. It's wonderful because, again, if you had a great, wonderful time in high school, you know, you were Ferris Bueller, you know, whatever. You were very popular in high school. You enjoyed your high school days. Um, you scored four touchdowns in Polk High. You know, whatever it is that you did, um, it's probably going to translate well again. You know what I mean? If you're going to have to do that all over again. But for some people that did not have a pleasant experience, you know, through high school, you know, through the college years, through those years for whatever the reason, well, you're going to find yourself in a very sticky situation once you come out here and you're not, you know, interacting with the locals, you know, you're not in, you know, dealing with the Mexicans and, and, and doing all the Mexican things and living with the Mexicans and the locals, you're not doing any of that. And, and what you're actually doing is that you're, you know, um, relying on other foreigners, on other expats, you know, on in these enclaves, you know, um, and once you get there, well, you, you quickly realize that you're going to have to start making new friends. And again, you guys already know, once you get to a certain age, and older it just gets more and more difficult to make friends so now you find yourself in a situation where you know all of your friends all of your loved ones are living in another country you know the usa or wherever and you're now in mexico alone or maybe just with your spouse and now you're going to have to make new friends new friend circles you know new um uh, acquaintances you know all kinds of things you know and you're going to have to again, you know, mingle within these circles. And, you know, sometimes you'll blend in well, sometimes you won't. Sometimes it's, you know, again, it's your people, sometimes it's not. And it's all this, again, it depends on where you move to Mexico and, and, and your situation. But anyone that's uh, kind of stuck in this situation is going to quickly realize, again, it's, it's either going to be a lot of fun or uh, not fun at all and um very sad or very um disappointing or very upsetting or what have you um because again you know depends on the situation you know you might not just be you might not be able to get along with the other foreigners or expats because of the way you think or what you want out of life or you know what you think about your home country or not or the fact that you can't drop those issues and you got to keep talking about those issues or you know the fact that you don't want to assimilate and they don't want to assimilate and it's so you're all dealing with all these issues and so at the end of the day it all just again once you get to a certain age and older and you know again whether you're moving to a retirement community or you're moving to a new place and you got to start all over again again the younger you are the easier it is to make friends and new acquaintances and and, and establish new relationships but the older you get the more difficult it becomes and so this is something that again a lot of people have, have dealt with or have to deal with or are currently dealing with when they come out here and no one talks about this. For me, it was very easy because, again, I just quickly assimilated with the Mexicans in the Mexican culture. And I was just living with it. And every once in a while, I would encounter other Americans, other foreigners, other expats. Um, and, you know, we just never meshed well together because, again, they were in certain groups. They were of a certain age. You know, they were just in a certain, you know, circle you know, circles that I was n not interested in being in. And, 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 and in a lot of times, I just, you know, wasn't cool enough or wasn't, uh, you know, of a certain um, hierarchy or I don't even know what to say, you know, to be in those circles or groups. Now, this is before I was, you know, YouTube famous or what have you. Things have changed, obviously. And, uh, you know, now a lot of people want me to participate and are constantly pulling me from one place to the other. And it's very different. So I 
you know, like other YouTubers out there, probably don't fall into this category. But anyone else out there that is just moving to Mexico, whether you're here to retire or you're here to move to live a new life, and uh, you know, again, you're not anywhere near to assimilating to the culture, this is gonna be a very difficult thing to deal with. And it's just the reality of it. Because again, that's the best way that I can describe it. It's just that, you know, you're now going to a brand new school and you don't know any of the kids in this school um, and you're very different, um, you know, compared to the other kids in the school. And then, you know, once you are in your little groups, you know, the groups that always form in the high school, in the schools, um, you realize that the groups that you're part of are, not, are the min minority in this case. And because they're part of the minority, then, well, now you have to, you stand out more within the, that group of minorities. In this case, again, expats, foreigners, Americans, whatever you want to call it. And um, again, it's, 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 you know, all of a sudden you're measuring, you know, how big your house is compared to others. You know, your boat, your retirement, your life, your this you're that. And again, depending on who you are, if you're someone that's like me, you know, um, easygoing, free loving, whatever, it don't matter. You'll get along with anyone and talk to anyone and then have a relationship and a friendship with just about anyone. But there's a lot of people that you already know, you know, they got to be the cool kid or not the cool kid, you know, um, whatever it is, you know how I'm saying, like I'm conformist or I'm non-conformist, you know, whatever it is, but it doesn't matter. It just goes back to that, you know what I mean? That, you know, very elementary, you know, um, kind of way of, um, you know, establishing relationships, you know, all the way back to how it was when you were a kid. And so for a lot of people, they're just not ready for that at all. They think that they're going to just show up here and they're going to have a bunch of friends and everything's going to be awesome and everyone's going to be on the same wavelength as them and they all want to do the same things as them and yada, yada, yada. And then they quickly realize, oh no, wait a minute, everyone out here is doing their own thing. And then the few people that are doing these group activities, I don't want to do any of these or I don't mix in with them. And before you know it, you're alone or you you cannot find your tribe or your group of people or anything like that and then you know things get a little difficult now for a lot of people again for some people there's not a problem it's a non-issue you know they are very easily you know able to blend in with all the groups one group a few groups whatever but some people you know it's just it's not easy and a lot of people just don't talk about this and uh it is a real thing you know again for me it, it, it was kind of like a little different, you know, honestly, for me, you know, I, it wasn't until I moved to Mexico that all of a sudden, you know, uh, wow, you know, what I mean, like that whole um, part of my life really blossomed. Um, because again, I was just dealing with the locals and I'm, you know, being Hispanic, being, you know, Cuban, Latino, whatever, you know, it, it just it was so easy to just blend in and and mix in within, you know, all of the Mexican stuff. Yeah. I'm very different. You know, not only am I American, but I'm Cuban. And, you know, not everything's the same. The only thing's the same is the, the language. I can speak Spanish. Um, but even that, it's not the same. But regardless, you know, they're more the same than somebody else. Like, again, that's coming from France or coming from the United States or Canada. They're, you know, it's a lot more different for someone like that to come out here and just mix in with the Mexicans. It's just... So it's different. It's just very different. And you know this because if you live in your own country, in the USA, Canada, Europe, and you got other friends that are immigrants or friends that are, you know, foreigners or whatever, it's not the same. You just don't. Have this. Sometimes you do have a really awesome, very tight and amazing relationship with them. But sometimes this is not. And this is a thing that you got to really, you know, keep in mind that a lot of people just forget for whatever reason until they get here and then. That hits him in the face, you know, literally, like uh, like Mike Tyson says, you know, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> Bruh. And that's the thing, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, a lot of people just don't know how to roll with the punches or, you know, again, they don't, they don't even know that these things are an issue until they are and then it's too late. So again, why I make these videos. Speaking of which, I think this video is long enough. Um, I think I've been harping on a lot of issues in this video and, I'm not, and, and I am not trying to dissuade anybody from coming to Mexico or moving to Mexico. I'm just really just trying to give you guys as much information as humanly possible so that you don't make the wrong decision. Because look, there's a lot of people like me in the audience right now, which again, it's not even an issue. You're probably not even watching this video. You're just coming out here and that's it because there's no other choice for you, okay? Again, there's a lot of scenarios in which that might be the case. But there's a lot of people out there that have choices, many choices. And uh, for whatever reason, you pick Mexico because, I don't know, it just seemed like the best idea. 
and or it's sold to you the best you know on on youtube or whatever you know for whatever reason you just find it as a better option for you but without really going deep into you know is it really going to be a better option for you or not and that's why again i make these videos and uh it's it's you know not not being negative i'm trying to be as positive as humanly possible i'm just trying to be realistic i hope that makes sense so with all that being said i think this video has been long enough and i hope you guys enjoyed the ride and enjoyed today's video and enjoyed everything that i uh you know did in this episode uh and if you did i want to give a special shout out to all my patrons all my members all my followers every single one of you new subscribers all the old subscribers everyone that's been watching me for years or a few hours or a few days it doesn't matter i love all you guys shout out to every single one of you Thank you so much for all your love and support. Thank you so much, you know, again, for all your participation, whether it's in this video by leaving a comment, leaving your two cents, or again, in the other videos and the live streams that I do every Thursday and all the things that I do and everything in between. Shout out to all of you. Thank you so much for all of, uh, again, all your love and support. So with all that being said, we're done. So you already know the deal. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon. But more importantly than anything else, please stay awesome. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.